The vast majority of us drink it, we all have our own relationship with it, but just how does alcohol affect us, especially when we get behind the wheel of a car? Each time we drink, our body must process the alcohol we consume, a journey that starts at our lips and ends when all the alcohol has gone from our system. The first step in this process is absorption. After being swallowed, the alcohol travels to the stomach. Some of the alcohol immediately goes straight through our stomach wall and into our bloodstream. The rest of the alcohol travels to the small intestine. Here the alcohol is absorbed more quickly into the bloodstream than from the stomach. Tiny blood vessels and capillaries in both the stomach and intestines transport the alcohol to all parts of the body. And all this happens within minutes of swallowing your first sip of alcohol. So how does the way we drink affect our intoxication level? It's not the overall amount of alcohol in our system that dictates levels of intoxication, but the percentage of alcohol in our bloodstream. This is referred to as BAC, or blood alcohol concentration. The speed at which we absorb alcohol into our bloodstream can be affected both by how quickly we drink and the amount of food we've eaten. Food can help slow down the absorption process and reduce our level of intoxication. But it's important to note that if you've eaten food, the alcohol you drink will be present in your body for longer, and you may stay over the legal driving limit for longer. The next step in the process is distribution. The alcohol, now carried in the blood, enters the liver, which will make its first attempt at removing it. The liver can only remove about one unit per hour. Any amount above this will be carried in the bloodstream to other organs, muscle tissue, and the brain. As the alcohol penetrates our tissue and cells, it distorts their molecules, preventing them from working properly. Our brain cells are particularly affected in this way. So, how does our body get rid of the alcohol? The blood returns to the liver for another attempt at elimination, and will continue again and again until there is no more present. As you can see, the body takes much longer to eliminate alcohol than it does to absorb it. And there's nothing we can do to speed up that process. Drinking black coffee, having a cold shower, or taking in fresh air will not sober someone up. At best, it may make them feel less drowsy for a short while. So, not much can speed up the elimination process, but can anything slow it down? Lots of everyday drugs can hinder our body's ability to eliminate alcohol. These include medications to treat hay fever, coughs, colds and headaches, sleep, anxiety or depressive illness, and any preparation that includes codeine or paracetamol. Because the liver is so important for alcohol elimination, anything that stops it functioning to its full potential will also slow down the process, including illness, age-related degeneration, or in the case of young people, the liver's immature state. We've seen how alcohol affects the organs and cells in our bodies, but how does this impact on the way we drive? The very presence of alcohol may be a factor in the decision to drive in the first place. That's because our brain's ability to make an accurate assessment of risk will be severely limited. Once you're in the car, your inability to make sensible decisions could also increase the likelihood of a collision, either through excess or inappropriate speed or risky driving behavior. Your spatial awareness will also be impacted. That's your ability to judge distance, negotiate gaps, and tell the speed of your own vehicle or that of another. Alcohol can affect us in different ways depending on our mood or state of mind at the time of drinking. If we're happy and content, it can heighten our good feeling. But the flip side is that drinking when we're in a low mood, feeling victimized, or in the aftermath of receiving bad news, can lead to severe depression and in extreme cases, suicidal thoughts or actions. The brain has to communicate with the body's motor neurons to allow us to move and function properly. After a few drinks, we lose our hand-eye coordination. When driving, this can mean we fail to coordinate movements when changing gear, steering, or indeed braking. Because our brain helps us distinguish the direction of sound, our hearing also becomes impaired in the presence of alcohol. Sight is our most important sense when it comes to driving, and what we see is influenced greatly by alcohol. Intoxication slows down our eyes' ability to respond. This can inhibit our ability to distinguish colours and cause blurred vision or even temporary blindness. 
Whether you enjoy an occasional pint or have developed an alcohol dependency, alcohol affects your body, your brain and your actions each time you drink. Every year, drink driving is responsible for hundreds of deaths on our roads. Have none for the road. Think road safety.